Today, we're actually looking at part one of a two-part video series. And in case you're curious about what this series is about, we're going to replicate a video that's actually about 10 years old. And just in case you're curious about what that video is, here's a quick sneak peek. Now, initially I was going to compile everything into one video, but then I realized this portion of it warrants its own video. So enough with the explanation and the justification, let me walk you through what we're doing here. And if you're curious about seeing the second part of this two-part series, subscribe to the channel and I'll be coming out with that very soon. Or of course, if you happen to be watching this in the future, check the link in the description below. We're going to be working in the Fusion page. So the first thing I wanna do here on the edit page is bring down a Fusion composition. I'll make sure that it's highlighted and we'll head over to the Fusion page. Before we do anything on the Fusion page, we want to download our model. There's a number of sites where you can get 3D models, both free and paid. Today I'm using CG Trader. What you're mostly looking for is either downloading an OBJ file, which is what we have here, or an FBX file. The other thing that you want to look at is that it's a pretty low poly count. Here it's about 29,000 polygons, which is actually pretty low compared to some that have millions of polygons. This one does come with textures and UV mapping. It doesn't come with materials, but that's exactly what we're going to address in this video today. Once we have our model downloaded, now we can import it into the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. The way that we can do that is coming up to the Fusion toolbar up here, import, and then FBX scene. One thing that I'd like to point out is that even though we chose FBX from that menu, it doesn't have to be in an XBF file. If I come down to this drop down on the right hand side here, you'll see all the supported extensions that we can import, including obviously the FBX, OBJ, and the others that you see here. So what I'll do is navigate to the folder where that file is and bring it into DaVinci Resolve. The next screen that you'll see is this one right here. For all intents and purposes, for still subjects, like the one that we downloaded, this will be fine. Some of this we don't really need. You can deselect or select any of these as needed, of course. But for what we're doing, this will be fine. And I'm going to click OK, and it will show up in our node tree down here. If you peek at this preview window over here, you can see how many nodes came through. And you may even notice that by peeking at the inspector on the right hand side. Just to be clear, depending on which model you download, a lot of them will look similar to this, but it also depends on how the person exported the file. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes there is a best case scenario and sometimes things may be worded incorrectly or worded strangely that you may have to do a little investigation. But for the most part, depending how complex the model is, this is what it's going to look like. If we scroll in a little bit, you'll notice in this case, the person that exported this particular file named things pretty well. So here we have a rim, this one right here is a tire. What we're looking at here on the left-hand side is the material node. So this is not necessarily part of the architecture of the model. It's more of what the model looks like, so to speak. I'm going to click on this and drag it up into one of our windows here, and you'll notice what we're looking at. So right now, if we look at the model, the rim is going to be this white color. If I select this node right here, let me adjust the color and you'll see how it updates in our window up top and now we have a blue rim. In order to see what that part of our model looks like, I'll take this node right here and drag this up. And that's the rims of our automobile in our model. At least this is two of them, of course. Before we get to the point of this video, I want to show you the entire model. So we'll follow this node tree back up and let me take this root node and we'll bring this up into our viewer up top. Let me zoom in just a little bit here and you can see our blue rims right there. There's one on this side and of course, there's one on the other side of the model. Right now we can't see all the details of our model. So what we can do is come up here to these options and instead of solid, I'm going to choose lights. And now we can see the shape of our model. We can also come down here and choose shadows. It essentially does the same thing, at least in this particular view. I'm going to hold down all and we can pan around. And there's our other blue rim. Now the problem that I want to address here is how realistic do we want this model to look? For example, if I move in a little bit here and I select maybe this area right here, that's selecting this part of our model. And just so we can see what it is, I'm actually going to grab one of these here and we can move it up and we can see that's that part of the body. Obviously I don't want to keep it there. So I'm going to hit control Z on my windows keyboard. 
and put it back into place. If I follow this back to here, remember this is the part of the model that we're looking at. This is the material node. So I'll come up here and maybe I'll change this to something uh, like this orange right here. And now we have this orange yellow looking car. Let me pin around this a little bit. Now for the most part, that doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't look realistic. It doesn't look like car paint. We may want something like chrome wheels and this isn't chrome. This is just a gray color on our wheels. So what can we do to rectify the situation? So instead of this color right here, what I'll do is come up to here, change it back maybe to a white color. And then what we can do to make this more realistic, we don't even necessarily need to build specific nodes out. DaVinci Resolve has something built into the system for us. So what we can do is come up to effects, down to templates, down to fusion, and then down to shaders. Right here, we have something called car paint. So I'll bring this into the node tree. And in case you're curious about what the other nodes are, I'll see if I can maybe zoom this out just a little bit. We have our base color, the base structure right there, the reflection right here, and all the adjustments you'll notice here on the right hand side. What we can do is actually just choose this one right here and the color of the car that we want it to be and the specular color, which will be the brightest parts of the paint. So again, I'm going to come up to our window, click on this, and this is the frame of our car, which we've already determined before. This is our material node, which is our blend node. That's not necessarily important for this type of video. And you do have a bunch of options besides blend, but again, because of what we're doing, you don't necessarily need to build this yourself and you don't necessarily need to know what it is. Because in this case, what I'm going to do is take the output from our car paint node and then plug it into our material node. Now, the reason it looks like this is because if we come to our base color, we can see the adjustments that were made here. But if I adjust this over to maybe this gray color here, and then this gray color here, we come back to our car paint, we can choose something maybe like a blue, maybe adjust the specular a little bit. And you can see what happened in our scene there. I'm holding down alt on my keyboard and now we can pan around the car. You may notice how much differently it reflects the light as opposed to what it was doing before. Let's quickly talk about the sponsor of this video, ArtGrid. ArtGrid is my choice for high quality, royalty free footage. It's the best site that I've seen to download high quality footage, including different formats, which include log and raw. Speaking of compositing, there's also green screen footage that you can download. You can download that footage and then composite your own footage into it. With many categories and collections, you will definitely find the footage that you need. Use my link in the description below for two free months on top of a yearly subscription. Thanks for listening and thank you ArtGrid for being a sponsor. So using that same technique, what I'm going to do is move over to one of these tires here. Let's maybe choose this. And let's say we want this to be chrome. So here is the part of the model that we're talking about. Here's the material. I'll come up here where it says chrome, bring it down here. We'll take this and feed it into here. And now we have this in our model. Once again, I'll hold alt on my keyboard and pan around a little bit. And you can see how it reacts to the light. Whereas if I disconnect this, we don't really have those reflections and obviously it's that gray color. If you're curious about what this particular node group is composed of, you can just double click on this and it's showing you everything that this is made of. We have a blur, we have a dissolve, but again, we didn't have to make this ourselves. The mines over at Blackmagic have already done the hard work for us. So I'll pipe this back into here. As you may have noticed, obviously the way that this particular model has been created, this only affected one of our wheels, but we can do the same thing all the way around. So if I click on this, let me just make sure I have the actual piece selected there, which I do right there. Now this is the model and I can actually see where this says rim too, which will come in handy because what we're planning on doing here is piping the same material into these also. You don't need to just send this into one and have multiple instances of this, unless there's some logic to that for you. However, in this case, let me just bring this up here. And that was for this wheel. And then of course we'll move it here. 
that one was for this wheel over here. Let me disconnect that and show you again. We have another one right here. And there's a couple more down here. But the point of me showing you that was because I wanted to show that you didn't necessarily have to create multiple instances of any of these shaders up here. Because of our subject matter here, I really wanted to address those two things because card paint in and of itself is something really difficult to recreate. As you may have noticed, it takes a couple nodes just to get there. Same thing with Chrome. I've actually already finished mocking up another car. So instead of looking at this, let me switch over to the other fusion composition and you can see what is pretty much a final result. Again, we have those lights bouncing off the chrome and reflecting nicely off our car paint. As I mentioned in the beginning, the reason I'm showing you this is because this is going to be part of a two part series. If you're curious about seeing what you saw earlier in the video, please subscribe to the channel and hopefully I can teach you some more compositing tricks within DaVinci Resolve. As always, links to all my stuff in the description below and keep an eye out for that other video.